Royal Oak, Michigan, the most regal of all of the Metro Detroit cities. Well, it has the most regal name. I mean, royal is right in there, right? Oh, how fancy. Royalness aside, is it really a good place to live? If you're watching this, I assume you're thinking about moving to the city of Royal Oak. In this video, I'm going to review the city of Royal Oak. I'm gonna tell you what I love about the city and also what I don't really like about the city of Royal Oak. Something's gonna suck about Royal Oak, to be honest. TBH, is that what the kids are saying? TBH, to be honest. Why is he talking like that? And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'll tell you who should live there and maybe who shouldn't live there. Roll the intro. If you're new here and new to my channel, my name is Paul and I help people like you make better, more informed decisions when moving to, from, or around Metro Detroit, Michigan. So if you like that sort of thing, subscribe. It's, I mean, people are always telling you to subscribe to channels, but like this one, I mean it. Like for sure, you probably should. And like the video, if you like the video. And if you want to make a move to any of the cities in Metro Detroit, Michigan, reach out because I am a full-time real estate agent and I've helped hundreds of people buy millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars in real estate. And there's a good chance I can help you too. And if you don't want to listen to all my rants about Royal Oak, just skip to the end of this video. I probably shouldn't tell you that, but I'll just wrap it up in a bow. I'll just tell you all about it right at the end. You just won't hear some really cool stuff. First things first about Royal Oak, let's get into the history of Royal Oak and how it got that funky name. How do you get a funky name like Royal Oak, Michigan? I mean, Michigan's kind of a given because it's in Michigan. So way back in 1651, King Charles II was running from people who wanted to do great bodily harm to him, basically. He wanted to kill him. That's basically, that's the deal. So he decided to do what anyone would do and he climbed up in an oak tree. He was like, this is a perfect place to hide, an oak tree. Have you ever tried to climb an oak tree? It's not easy, it's not like a pine. It's not like you just reach the branches and get up there, unless it's a really low oak, you know? So like, I don't even know how this all worked. Anyways, as the story goes, his plan worked. So he climbed a tree, it worked, the bad guys passed right underneath him. They didn't see him, and he's all up there snickering, like, ha ha, look at me, I'm so cool up here, looking like a king. You know, every time I talk about this or think about this, I think of the Burger King king hiding in a tree and how ridiculous that would look. Don't kill me, I have a whopper. That king told the story to everyone and they, they named that tree the Royal Oak. So that sort of makes sense, right? That tree was not here in Michigan. That tree, there's a descendant of that actual tree still roped up over in, in England. It's like roped off, it's a descendant of the tree. So it's like you know, a seedling of the tree. I don't know how they know for sure. But apparently they do. Anyways, fast forward to 1819. The area that is now called Royal Oak was being surveyed by Lewis Cass and he spotted a big oak tree and he was like, you know what? That oak tree reminds me of the Royal Oak back in uh, England. So let's just name this area Royal Oak. Great, that makes it easy. So as far as the naming goes, the city gets like a 10, because that's a crazy story. Like no other city has a crazy story like that. So if you move there, now you know the story, you could tell that story to everyone. Next up, we'll talk about the location of Royal Oak. Now, Royal Oak, if you watch my video about the Woodward Corridor, I'll link it here. It's located 20 minutes outside of Detroit, so it's pretty close. And it's only 25 minutes to downtown Detroit, so it's just a straight shot. You can get right there really quick. That's why a lot of people like living there. And it's only 34 minutes to the airport. So you've got 25 minutes to downtown Detroit, 30-ish minutes to the airport, kind of a perfect location for everyone. So to me, the location is kind of unbeatable, especially if you want to live near downtown Detroit. If you work there, like the Rensen or anything like that, it's an amazing place to live as far as the location goes. Like a straight shot to anything. So for the location, city gets a nine. We'll say a nine. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's it's pretty, pretty close to perfect. Now we're gonna talk about the size, you know, the size, the population, and the demographics of the city. Now, it's not a small city, but it's also not huge. It's kind of like on the medium side. It's 11.8 square miles, and it's super walkable. Now, if you compare that to Detroit, Detroit is 142.89 square miles. It's a very specific number. So, Royal Oak seems very small compared to a city like Detroit, but Detroit's just a monster city. I've talked about Detroit in the past, and it is just crazy. Like, when people say, I want to move to Detroit, I'm like, do you? Like, do you really? Like, that's great, but like, do you know where? Because the city's crazy big. You could fit 12 Royal Oaks into the city of Detroit. 12 of them. So, 
That's how big Detroit is. That's how small Royal Oak is. And nearly 59,000 people live here in Royal Oak. So not a super big city, but pretty populated for its size. Now, if you compare that to nearby Ferndale, which I also discussed in my video about the Woodward Corridor, that's three times the population of nearby Ferndale. They're right about 20,000 people. And now the average age of someone who lives in Royal Oak is about 36 years old. And it makes sense because there's a lot going on in the city of Royal Oak. There's a lot to do, it's close to stuff. Again, yeah, close to downtown Detroit, close to Ferndale, close to a lot of different cities. You can get to the airport. I actually wanted to live in Royal Oak for the longest time because it just be like perfect. You can live in one of the high rise condos downtown, go hang out, another life. So for the size, I'd say it gets like a seven. You know, like it's not crazy, like again, not crazy big, it's not like a big, big city, but it's a it's a densely populated, medium-ish city. Now, let's talk about the housing here, the housing types, and sort of what to expect if you'd like to live in Royal Oak, Michigan. Now, there are a good mix of houses in Royal Oak, Michigan. You're gonna find a lot of newer construction mixed in with older construction. A lot of small, narrow lots, not a lot of big, wide open spaces. That's not really a thing here. It is a smaller city. So you're gonna have these smaller lots, older bungalows, um, older colonials, smaller ranches. But what's happening to a lot of these houses is they're being leveled and people are putting up brand new construction that looks like older construction so it sort of blends into the you know the landscape in the area but you know the bigger the house you put on one of those lots the smaller your yard is so you have to keep that in mind if you just smash a giant house in one of these tiny lots it's just like a monster luckily there's a bunch of stuff to do around here so you know you don't have a, a big yard but maybe you'll be all right you're not going to find a bunch of estate style homes. Like if you look in Novi, Northville, Rochester, Rochester Hills, you're going to find big estate homes where you have, you know, three, four car garages, 4,000 square feet, things like that. That's not really common in a city like Royal Oak. It's a very walkable city. Now the good thing about that is that you have fences. For most of the homes in Royal Oak, you're going to have fenced yards. And what I've learned from talking to a lot of people from other states, in the United States is that it's kind of weird that Michigan doesn't have a ton of fenced communities. I mean, most of the newer construction, anything built from like the 70s up, you're gonna have wide open spaces in your backyard and your HOA will not allow you to put a fence in. That is not the case in Royal Oak. You can have fences just about everywhere. And the average price for a home in Royal Oak is $285 thousand dollars so right about that three hundred thousand dollar mark currently today the cheapest home in the city of royal oak is one hundred and sixty thousand dollars and it's only 800 square feet so it's freaking tiny it's like a, it's like a garage it's like a small apartment but it's a house but the most expensive home on the market is 1.3 million so there's a, a big range if you fancy and you've got a bunch of money you can live in royal oak you know Maybe save some money. Don't live in Birmingham, live in Royal Oak. I'm not telling you not to move to Birmingham because I love Birmingham, but just you want to save some cash, move to Royal Oak. This is like Beeham on a budget. Wait, what? Beeham is Birmingham. Now, one thing I really do love about Royal Oak, and I mentioned this before, is they have high rise condos in downtown Royal Oak. So a lot of the cities around here don't have things like that. So we're not a big city like LA or anything like that. So having those high rise condos where you can just be in the middle of everything and sort of get everywhere very quickly. I think it's super cool. So younger buyer or whatever, Royal Oak condos, it's amazing. So for the housing, I would actually give Royal Oak a 10 because I think that it's, it's good for a lot of people or maybe a nine. Let's knock that down to a nine because it's good for a lot of people. But if you want a big estate style home, you're not going to find it here. Like that's, that's not really gonna happen. But if you just want a good, like walkable community, like newer houses, older houses, things like that, it has a good mix. And the condos. Next up, we'll talk about the cost of living in Royal Oak. It's so expensive to live in Royal Oak. Whew, I'm just kidding, it's really not. Actually, it's only a little more expensive to live in Royal Oak than the average city in the United States. It's more expensive than the average city in Michigan, but it's not much more expensive than the average city in the United States. The US average is $291,000 for a home. In Royal Oak, 285. We already discussed that. So it's actually under, right? So that's under by a little bit. The average Michigan city is $208,000. So that's your average price across the board all over the mitten. Is that the right way to show you the mitten? This way? Whatever. 
The whole thing, $208,000, that's your average Royal Oak, more expensive, but it's awesome, right? Like you're not out in the boonies, you're not away from everything, you're close to shopping, you're close to a downtown. And so when we're talking about the cost of living, a big part of that is, is it's super walkable. So the city's walkable, you can sort of walk to shops, you can walk downtown, you can walk around. You don't have to take a car everywhere. In Michigan, in the winter, you might want to take a car because the winters suck. I've made a whole video about the winters in Michigan. You can check that out here if you'd like. So the cost of living, 10. We'll give that a 10 for sure. It's not bad, not too bad. Next up, we're going to talk about the schools in Royal Oak, Michigan. The Royal Oak School District, ROSD, R-O-S-D, ROSD, is that how we want to say it? Royal Oak Neighborhood Schools. ROS, RONS, RONS. I think I like ROSD better. We should stop saying that. So there are six elementary schools, there is one junior high and one high school. So what's nice about having six elementary schools scattered across a medium-sized city is that you're probably going to be close to one. So if you have kids that are you know, school-aged or elementary school age, there's a good chance you will be close to an elementary school, which is nice. You know, if they want to walk or if you want to drive them and you know, you don't want to like get up an hour before they go to school and make your coffee and everything, you can just get up a few minutes before they go to school and maybe make them get up and get themselves ready. If you want to know about the school ratings in Michigan or in Royal Oak, Michigan in particular, there are sites like School Digger or greatschools.com and they will break down every single rating and review for each one of the schools. So if there's a school in particular that you'd like to be close to, really you're only gonna have to worry about the elementary schools because you only have one high school and you only have one middle school, so it's just the elementary school. So if you wanna be in a certain one, just find out what one you wanna be in and then talk to your agent about being in that area. I was looking at sites like niche.com uh, and there are all positive reviews for the, for the Royal Oak School District, except for one. Um, and that was about a private school. So it was a negative review about a private school, which I don't even think counts. Like you shouldn't even be allowed to put that on there. So school districts, Royal Oak, 10 from me. It gets a 10. It's great. All right, so next we're gonna talk about the fun factor for the city, the fun factor. Like, is there actually things to do in this city? Yeah, Royal Oak, amazing. Tons of things to do. Major points in the fun department. You've got the Detroit Zoo. I know it's called the Detroit Zoo, but it is in Royal Oak, so they get the points for it. Not Detroit, Royal Oak gets it. You wanna go to the zoo? You wanna see some crazy animals? Royal Oak. Actually, whenever I'm driving along the freeway, there's a big water tower that says Detroit Zoo on it, right off the freeway. And that's how I know when I'm passing through Royal Oak. I'm like, there it is. I mean, also the street signs. But that's a really good way to know you're passing through Royal Oak. Downtown scene. I've already talked about this before, but it has one of the best downtowns in the state. They just have a lot of, a lot of shops, a lot of restaurants, a lot of things going on in a fairly small area. There's like bars and nightclubs. When I was young, I, I don't know, too much. And that's probably the reason I wanted to live in Royal Oak. Going clubbing. You have the Royal Oak Music Theater. So this was built as a vaudeville theater back in 1928. And now it's just like a cool theater you can like see bands and stuff at. So right there, downtown. Pretty sweet. And they have Arts, Beats, and Eats. If you're not from the area, you've probably never heard of this. But Arts, Beats, and Eats is exactly what it sounds like. It's art, paintings, and things. Beats. It's my dance music. It's beats. It's music. And it's eat, so there's food. So it's a whole festival of art, food, sweet music. It actually started back in 1999 in Pontiac and it moved in 2010 to Royal Oak because Royal Oak is awesome. We've already discussed that. It actually brings in multiple millions of dollars to the area. So it's not only super fun to go to, it brings in a ton of money to the area. So for things to do, man, the city's getting a lot of tens. It gets a 10, it has everything. It has a lot to do. It's a awesome place to be around. Next we have to talk about the restaurants in Royal Oak. The food. We cannot do a city review without talking about food. <laughs> and Royal Oak kills it again. They've got so many good restaurants. I'm gonna try to just like limit down to just a few, but man, there's a ton of good ones. Actually, uh, restaurants in Royal Oak is the most Googled thing about the city. Search. People are, I mean, they search for Arts, Beats, and Eats and they, they look up parking and the weather, but Royal Oak Restaurants is the number one thing people are searching for. People wanna know 
what restaurants they should go to in Royal Oak. I should just make a whole video all about restaurants in Royal Oak. Maybe I'll do like a vlog style video where I'm just like walking into restaurants, talking about food. Sure, people care about crime and schools, but what they really care about is burgers and burritos. It is about priorities. So I'm gonna break this down into three separate sections here. We're gonna talk about breakfast, lunch, and dinner because that makes it easy. All right, so breakfast food, go to O-W-L. It's owl, right? But it's like O-W-L. So it's 24-hour Mexican-American like comfort food. This place actually has all the meals. So it's breakfast, lunch, dinner. You buy a bunch there. You just squeeze in between. After dinner, pre-breakfast after breakfast. It has all the meals. You don't even need to go to Taco Bell. Just go to Owl. I really needed somewhere to list for breakfast on this list. I almost wanted to put this place for all of them, but I can't do that. I can't do that to you. I can't leave you hanging. I've got to put more than one, but you should definitely check out Owl. And it doesn't matter when you go. It's going to be good. So now for lunch, go to the Detroit Eatery. It's like New York style street food. In Royal Oak! New York style in Royal Oak. That's a cool city. We're gonna talk about. All sorts of good food. This place is a total gem. It's like a little hidden gem. Not really hidden, because a lot of people know about it. Tiki masala, you get stir fry, you even get a burger. How awesome is that? Just look at the website, check out the menu, and just go. Go to Owl, let your food digest a little bit, or just eat a little bit, and then go over to the Detroit eatery. Next up is dinner. I would suggest checking out Mesa Tacos and Tequila. Seriously, I could eat Mexican food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, all the time, every day, without a problem. I worked in a pizzeria for years, I ate pizza all day, every day, and I was fine with that. I'm still not sick of it. I could definitely do it with some good Mexican food. Steak tacos, amazing nachos, and burritos that are freaking bigger than your head. That's what you need right there. You can like get one, if you're on a budget, split it in half, each of you have half a burrito. And I have nobody to eat lunch with. Assuming you're with somebody. You really can't go wrong there. Unless you don't like Mexican food. Then, I don't know, what's wrong with you? I'm just kidding, I'm not hating. You can go somewhere else. Go to, there's a bunch of sushi places in Royal Oak too that are amazing. And man, I need to just make a whole video about restaurants in Royal Oak. I'll put a link to the top 10 uh, restaurants according to Yelp in the description below. So you can check that out some other time. So for restaurants, I'm going to give it a seven. There's a lot of amazing restaurants in Royal Oak, but there's not a lot of fancy restaurants in Royal Oak. You really have to go outside of Royal Oak to find anything like that. That's fine. Your average age in Royal Oak is a little bit younger, so maybe people don't want to go to a fancy steakhouse every night. So that's fine. You go to Birmingham for that. So overall, I would say that Royal Oak is honestly one of my favorite cities around. It's one of my favorite cities in the Woodward Corridor because it's basically affordable. It's not crazy expensive. It's not crazy cheap. You can find something from just about any price range and you can find a house that you like for your family. You have a little bit of a yard, you have a newer house, you have an older house, sort of anyone would like living in Royal Oak. So I'd say if, if you're younger, you wanna live there, even if you're older, whatever. It's very walkable, which is nice. Just live in a ranch, whatever. So what do you think? Do you wanna make Royal Oak your home? If so, let me know, I can help. I can help you buy or sell there. And if you're still looking for a place to live in Metro Detroit, Michigan, check out some of these other videos and playlists around here and I will definitely see you there.